shift. So while we're here, let's just look at um, testpad.html real quick. So this is um, basically just our host file for the uh, testpad.js. So basically, this is just an empty HTML file that's going to fire off the test script. We're going to use this setup a few times in this class just to test out some syntax and um, new thing that we're going to learn before we put it in our live project file. So you can close this uh, tab because we're not going to add it testpad.html in this class. It's just a launch pad for our test script. So now we're going to launch uh, testpad.html in a little bit. So let's come over here, do a right click, and then come down here and do copy full path. Make sure you do this one and knock the project path. Copy full path would we'll, we'll put the uh, full file path of that file onto your clipboard. Okay, so we're going to go back to Google. Um, so let's see, we're still on this configuration screen, and then down here we can, we can just say continue to console. Okay, so we've created the app, and uh, now we need to create our database. So we're going to come over here on the left side, where it says database. You're going to click on that. Now this is a little bit confusing, because Google is trying to use, make you to use uh, Cloud Firestore, which is kind of the newer version of Firebase, and it's uh, a little bit different as well. So they're really trying to push this, so they put this first. But we're not going to do Cloud Firestore in this class. We're going to use real-time database or uh, Firebase. So you're going to scroll all the way down here. We see this kind of like a stack of servers, this orange background where it says real-time database. We're going to click on this one and it says create database. I know this task is a little long, but we're almost done here. Um, so it's going to ask you what kind of security rules do you want next. Um, now, normally you would, we would use the authentication features to control, um, to manage our users' login, but um, this we're just learning in this class. We're not going to do authentication in this class. So you can do it. Uh, you can just click on Start in Test Mode, which will give everyone access, read and write access to your data, which we don't really care at this point because we are the only ones who have access to this. So we're going to hit Enable. So the next screen is basically showing, this is what I'm talking about, the data tree. So um, unlike relational database, um, your database for non-SQL, it's just going to be a tree of, uh, kind of like JSON, if you are familiar with JSON. It's just basically a tree. But our tree only has one root node right now. It's empty. Um, go ahead and dismiss this security warning up here just so it doesn't take up our screen space. Now, um, our database created is empty, so let's go ahead and run our test script. Remember the last two uh, section of the test script, actually, we're putting two records in this. So we're going to go up here, create a new tab. You already put the file name on your clipboard, so all you have to do is right-click and then do paste and go right there. So again, that HTML file basically just it's just empty, but in the back it already fired off our test script. So, so if we um, go back to the Google Firebase tab here, which is by the way, which we will just leave this tab open throughout our class because we want this console. Um, so you will see that under that empty tree, we created a root node that sets issues. This is going to hold all our issues records. Um, that we're going to use. So if you click on this plus sign up here, you'll see that it expanded all the nodes for you. So under the issues, we created two sub nodes. These are two entries, two issues, um, with the description, resolved, and severity as our um, attributes. So these are basically our records in our database. So this is what a NoSQL database looks like. This is the root. And then you have notes. So this is a note, and these are sub notes, and these are sub notes. So this this is a key that Google Firebase created for you automatically when you use a push function. So let's go back to Adam and look at this push function. So when you do when you say push something, um, it will just create a key for you, and it it's guaranteed to be unique. 
um, within the database. So you don't have to worry about what this is. Um, we might have to use this later in our, in our code, but we don't have to know what it is. We just have to save it in a variable or something like that. So we have two notes here. So, well, congratulations. Your project is set up. Your database is now connected to our test script. So in the next task, we're going to start populating um, our web applications with data on the screen and uh, make, sure, uh, make it look a step closer to our final product. So I apologize, this task is a little bit long, but the next few ones will be a lot more enjoyable. So I will see you in the next task.